Rocksteady showcased their upcoming superhero shooter, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, in Sony's Data Play last February 23. In their presentation, they mentioned their plans to include more playable characters as post-release content, which added to our excitement. So as we wait for its glorious release, we here at GameMate made a list of 5 supervillains that should appear in the game. We also made a similar list for heroes, so be sure to check that out too. But for now, let's get started. Number 5. Weasel Weasel first appeared in Firestorm 36 way back in 1985. He's a man named John Monroe who dresses up like, well, a weasel to kill colleagues that he thinks did him wrong. After being thwarted by Firestorm and sent to prison, he was recruited by Amanda Waller and officially became a member of Task Force X in Doom Patrol and Suicide Squad Special. The character is best known for his appearance in the 2021 film, The Suicide Squad, where he's portrayed as, surprise, surprise, an idiotic humanoid weasel that killed 27 children. Yikes. Weasel's inclusion in the roster would greatly benefit the game in both narrative and gameplay. He could serve as comic relief with his dim-witted nature, and he has great potential for some fun, fun combat skills as he charges at enemies or crawls around the city. Though not as well-loved as the characters in our list, Weasel has promising qualities that could improve our gaming experience. Number 4. Polka Dot Man Polka Dot Man is one of Batman's earliest villains, first appearing in 1962's Detective Comics 300. The character is known for his ridiculous getup and the equally absurd gimmicks of using the polka dots in his costume as both weapons and transportation. Like Weasel, the character gained recognition from the 2021 film portrayed by David Desmalshin. This version of the character is a metahuman who has the ability to throw polka dots. We think that that version of the character would be perfect for cookie fun times in the game. He can use his polka dots as offensive weapons to shoot enemies or as a shield for defense. And he can use the polka dots as platforms to traverse the city. If you take a closer look at one of the scenes in the footage, you can see a piece of polka dot man's costume with his trademark spots. So who knows? He might even make an appearance in the game already. I hope so. Number 3. Ratcatcher Following the theme of being mainstream thanks to the Suicide Squad movie, the game can include Ratcatcher, most specifically Ratcatcher 2, to add a bit of diversity to the roster. Ratcatcher first appeared in Detective Comics 585 in 1988 as yet another Batman rogue who chained rats to eliminate the people that wronged him. In the movie, the second version of the character is the daughter of the first rat catcher, portrayed by Daniela Melchior. She uses a device to communicate with rats. Yeah, we know it's disgusting. But here's out. If rat catcher becomes part of Task Force X, she can use the rats to swarm enemies. Imagine Hugo from A Plague Tale. Do you see it now? Her skills would greatly benefit the team when dealing with hordes of Brainiac's drones. Number 2. Peacemaker We promised this would be the last one from the movies. Peacemaker is ironically a pacifist willing to do what is necessary to achieve peace. Even if this whole beach was completely covered in dicks, and somebody said I'd eat every dick until the beach was clean for liberty, I would say no problemo. Think of him as the unholy love child of Captain America's patriotism and the Punisher's desire to end criminals. In his spin-off show, you get to see different versions of his iconic helmet, like the screwdriver helmet capable of generating a full-body force field, or even the itchy band helmet which shoots spikes projectiles when activated. With the looks of the footage, Suicide Squad is willing to embrace the ridiculousness of these characters. And you gotta say, Peacemaker would be one hell of a squad member in the game. Now for a bonus round, here are some honorable mentions. El Diablo Cata Santana is a former gang member who received the powers of the Old West hero El Diablo and became the new iteration of the character. His pyrokinetic abilities would certainly be of use to barbecue some aliens and liberate Metropolis from Brainiac's control. Cupid. No, not the god of desire. But Carrie Cutter. I'm Cupid. Stupid. A deranged archer who is hopelessly in love with the Green Arrow after saving her from her abusive husband. As an ex-special ops soldier, Cupid uses her skills as a weapons expert to be a deadly wielder of the bow. Her inclusion into the squad would be good for diversity and would be an asset in completing their mission. Bane While not traditionally a member of Task Force X, Bane would be the perfect candidate. He appeared in the first two Arkham games and its prequel Arkham Origins. Known for his brute strength and feared for his intellect, Bane could serve as another tank for the team and could use Venom, an enhancing drug to rage on sorry aliens who wish to do you harm. And finally, number 1. Deathstroke Slade Wilson is a merc for hire 
that fought Batman on different occasions, even coming close to ending the Cape Crusader. In the Arkhamverse, Deathstroke was hired by the Joker, along with Deadshot and other assassins, to take Batman out during the events of Arkham Origins, in which he obviously failed. In the game's post credit scene, Amanda Waller visits Slade in his cell at Blackgate and recruits him for Task Force X. Little is known during his time with the squad, but he soon found himself in the employ of the Arkham Knight, promising a chance to fight Batman once more. And we all know how that ended. Not a lot of fans were happy with how the fight went down, since it was more or less a rehash of a boss battle in the main story. Rocksteady has the perfect opportunity to redeem themselves and the character by making him one of the playable squad members. Plus, Deathstroke is a lethal combatant, an efficient marksman like Deadshot, and a deadly swordsman, making him arguably the best contender for the squad. And that's our list. Since the game has not been released, there's still a chance for some of these characters to pop up somewhere in Metropolis. It would be nice for us to rotate our roster and kick some sorry alien butts. Do you think we missed anyone? Who do you want to see in the Suicide Squad? Let us know in the comments below. Till then, this is GameMate Information Station, signing off.